Hi, this is Phil at the Laptop Trader Channel on YouTube. Welcome to our community. Again, I'm here to share my experience and give back to the stock investing and trading community one video at a time. Caution, most stock traders lose money. Please protect yourself at all times. Nothing discussed in this video is trading or investing advice. This channel is for informational purposes only. Please seek qualified help if you need help uh, investing or help with your money. This month's agenda, we're going to cover the overall market. We're going to take a look at all the sectors and try to come up with a, uh, a theory of what's next for the market. Uh, we're going to just have a training this month on technical chart pivots and price levels, what is a pivot, uh, and also using pivots and price levels to um, limit our risk and to maybe determine how, star, how far a stock or an index can move either way. And then finally, we're going to have a continued discussion from last month on Uber. What did we learn since April? And is Uber a buy, sell, or hold at this time? So that's going to be a personal decision. I just want to put this list together for you guys of uh, kind of the market and ETF watch list that I use. <clears throat> this list covers um, the five main indexes that I use track the market to try to determine um, direction those are the S&P 500 the Nasdaq 100 uh, the Dow 30 ETF the Russell 2000 ETF and the uh, transportation ETF I also track the other top um, 11 or 12 main sectors of the market to get a sense of you know what's growing what right now what's not growing what's just kind of going neutral at this time so those are the different symbols and different um, sectors that I uh, look at so for example right now the bottom sector XLC the communication sector has been hot this year and so that may be one sector to look into as far as investing opportunities versus um, the uh, retail sector which is kind of flat this year uh, the XRT retail sector <clears throat> so here just a quick you know what is a pivot so just a quick little slide I put together of what is a pivot high what's a pivot low what do they look like what um, what determines what is a pivot well first of all you should be able to clearly see it on the chart okay it'll look obvious but as a definition we use a pivot high as three lower bars to the left and to the right of the bar in the middle is a pivot it can be more than three you know it can be ten it doesn't have to be three but a minimum of three and a pivot low is just the opposite you've got kind of a downtrend or a pullback and then you'll see three higher bars to the left and right of the pivot bar this can happen in any time frame um, you, you can see it on a monthly time frame but not as often but it works really well in like a weekly and a daily time frame in combination with our uh, market cycles so this all forms a, a pretty clear picture for me when I'm looking at these charts so pivot high and pivot low that's what we're going to kind of cover this month so here let's get into um, the overall market this is a monthly five-year chart of the S&P 500 and on here you can see a, a pivot low Right, this low bar, three bars to the left, at least three bars to the right, that's our pivot low. 
We have this move up into December and January, and that formed this pivot high, right? Three lower bars to the left and three lower bars to the right of that pivot, which ignited our bear market. And then in October, we had a pivot low, which kind of, I wouldn't say ignited, but definitely stopped the bleeding. And then since that time, we've been sideways in the S&P 500. So a key level on S&P is to, in my opinion, <clears throat> is if it can get over 420 and can continue pushing upward. There's definitely some buying pressure in the S&P 500, but there's also um, been a lot of negative economic news at the same time. So right now it's neutral, but it's neutral to bullish in the S&P 500 on the monthly chart. So then... Take, let's go down to the weekly chart and this is where we will see more pivots, right? So you can clearly see there's a pivot here, a lower high pivot, a lower high pivot, right? Lower high pivot here, another one, which is slightly higher. And we have this little uptrend here over the last six, seven weeks. And these pivots will form kind of a resistance area along with these bars. See these big red bars here? And here, these are going to form this resistance area around that 420. That's why that's such a key level. This price has really not been able to get above that and stay above that. So even though we have this pressure under the market of a lower low here versus this pivot, and then another lower low, the pressure is pushing up, but it's pushing up into this resistance area. So that's why I say the market is kind of bullish to neutral because it could really go either way. It's it's probable it's going to continue up, but at what at what rate? And any negative news is probably going to push the markets down. Okay. So it's in a weird area. It's not the worst area to buy. It is up over this three-year period even with the bear market. So it's not a bad place to get involved in the S&P 500 index or this ETF. So your downside is kind of around, again, that 380 to 390 area. But your upside potential is kind of more up here. So you've got a nice, not a bad risk to reward in the S&P at this time. And again, a lot of the economic news in these indexes has already been priced in. So a lot of the inflation and negative interest rate news and companies not having good earnings, it's already kind of priced in. And the S&P 500 represents a lot of large major companies. So looks like it's starting to move up. It's looking more positive. Daily chart of the last six months in the S&P 500 is more neutral, but recently it's shown some strength. That's just a daily chart there showing that. Again, you'll see these different pivots on this daily chart, so it's going to look a little bit different than the weekly chart. But when you combine all this information, you can make um, a technical choice to either enter a market, exit a market, or wait and see. This I just want to show you guys that over the last year, this is the uh, called the VIX, CBOE Volatility Index. It kind of measures um, futures and options on the S&P 500 index. And it has been trending down over the last year. So that's good news because generally lower volatility um, is one factor to higher prices. And I made videos back in, I think, October, November of last year that I said, I didn't think this market was going to really move up until we saw a significant decrease in volatility. And that's kind of what we've seen, which is why the S&P 500, in my opinion, has been slowly grinding up. Even though it's still in a range, it's, we do have some lower, or I mean, higher pivot lows. So that's good news. And the NASDAQ also has um, a pretty
pretty bullish looking chart. We've got two higher pivot lows. We have two higher pivot highs. And now we have a consolidation above this green bar, which was a range expansion bar, which engulfed this red bar. So we engulfed that, moved up, and went sideways. This is a, a consolidation over time, which generally marks a period where we should see the next move higher. Okay. So that's what I see for the NASDAQ going forward, which is the top tech companies, top 100 tech companies. And we've got the daily chart of NASDAQ also looks positive. When you look at that over the last six months, with a slight uptrend there. This is the Russell 2000 ETF, which is a broader based index of um, 2000 companies, including more small and mid cap companies, companies from all different sectors. This chart looks more negative than the other two. So while the big companies are doing pretty good, are not doing it that bad. These small and mid-cap companies in the Russell 2000 are not doing so good. And that's why this chart really hasn't moved much in the last year. And most recently, we've had a range expansion red bar with consolidation below that. That looks uh, way more bearish than the other two indexes. Transportation looks uh, neutral to me. Could go either way. We are higher than we were um, three years ago, but we're also still kind of in this downtrend from the bear market. So transportation could go either way. And here we've got um, just now we're going to get into the sectors. This is real estate that looks. Um, neutral to bearish to me with this red igniting bar consolidation sideways here that could go down it could also just kind of go sideways for a while real estate kind of almost still in a downtrend since 21 end of 2021 uh, communications has turned up i like this sector a lot i believe it's being led by um meta and facebook and some other companies so communications XLC looks very positive right now. Um, I'm seeing like a buy set up there over that close on Friday at 59.90. That's a pretty good area to buy. We've got um, material sector looks more um, bearish to neutral. Could go either way, but the pressure there is definitely down sideways so that could go sideways for a while or turn down or it could turn up too we don't know but just the, the probabilities look lower to neutral in materials that consumer discretionary which shows that um more of a neutral market kind of a back and forth range bound consumer discretionary since last year that doesn't seem like it's moving much. Consumer Staples has had a several six or seven weeks up. That looks very bullish. Consumer Staples, which is a defensive sector. So that often goes up when the economy is not doing so well. So that's another bullish chart along with communications. And we've got the utility sector, which looks somewhat bullish to neutral that could go uh, either way it's kind of bullish there up into some resistance going sideways consolidating so that could go either way uh, the technology sector looks very similar to the nasdaq chart i would call that uh, bullish the closing uh, range expansion green bar on friday uh, X technology and uh, communications look bullish. Healthcare, also a defensive sector, along with consumer staples. This looks uh, bullish to neutral. Healthcare 
tends to be a sector that doesn't move very fast. So uh, you may find that maybe some individual stocks within healthcare are doing pretty good. But that sector looks more bullish than uh, real estate, let's say. Industrials look somewhat bearish to neutral with this large red range expansion bar and prices consolidating below that. That looks kind of bearish to neutral. Financials definitely look bearish with this big range expansion bar and a banking meltdown. So I would say that if this sector cracks this pivot and goes lower, that definitely has the potential to bring the whole market lower because financials kind of affect everything. So that is definitely a negative. Energy looks um, bullish to neutral. We've got some buying pressure in that, but we also have some near term weakness here and here. So we're still below this big red bar. So that looks kind of bearish to neutral, even though prices have moved up over the last three years. Um, it's not certain if prices will continue to move up. We also have here like this triple top, right? One, two, three pivots. Not, you know, price is not able to move above that. <clears throat> we have software. So this is just an industry within these larger sectors, software. I just want to throw this in there for you guys to show you that you can break down some of these uh, sectors even further. And software um, obviously sold off with the rest of the market. It's been going sideways since last um, June. Recently, it has had some appreciation. Here we got a higher low. Here's a higher low pivot. But after this big red range expansion bar, um, with the moving average is starting to curl up and we could get over this area over, let's say, 120. And software, I would expect software to go higher. If this red bar continues lower, I would expect software to go lower. So again, neutral, kind of a neutral um, industry there in software could go either way. And then I always use the four market stages to kind of as a timing device to time my entries and exits using the four stages again at one stage one then stage two uptrend stage three have the um, distribution stage and then stage four is generally sell-off stage and this just shows those different stages uh, accumulation greed distribution and then fear and then many times the cycle starts over but for some individual companies that aren't profitable, many times um, the companies go out of business. So that's why we use that. I often think of when I look at these four stages, just like the music industry, how that has changed over the years from phonographs to records to CDs to tapes to iPods and MP3s to now streaming and how that whole music industry has changed over time. Okay, so let's get into our discussion of Uber this month. And you know, I just kind of gave you guys some homework last month. Just take a look at Uber, see what you can find, um, both you know fundamentally and some of the numbers about the company. Maybe take a look at some charts through April and just see what what do you see on the chart? Now I'm just going to share with you now what I found. So this chart is simply a chart, a comparison chart um, year to date. So this is since January 2023, showing the comparison between Uber, S&P 500, Lyft, its main competitor, and DoorDash. So we, we can obviously see here that while Uber's up 22, over 22% year to date, and DoorDash is up over 26% year to date, Lyft is down um, almost 8% year to date. So obviously Uber 
and DoorDash are outperforming versus Lyft and the market. S&P 500 is up just over 9% year to date. So I found that interesting. I didn't really consider DoorDash when I first was looking into this, but it seems like they are uh, outperforming. Then we have um, another comparison tool that I use, <coughs> excuse me, where we've got comparisons between Uber, um, Didi Global, which um, I, my understanding is a Chinese rideshare company in China. I had never heard of them before. Uh, Grab Holdings, and they, I didn't put these in here, but this software put these in here. Uh, Avis Group, which is a rental car company, and, and Hertz, uh, which is also a rental car company. They use that as a comparison instead of DoorDash on this screen, and then Lyft. So when you look left to right, <coughs> we can see that Uber has the larger, largest market share, market cap, it's 62 billion, whereas Lyft is at 3.8 billion. This also shows that over the last year, Lyft is down 60, over 69% price-wise, and Uber is down just over 5%. So Uber is outperforming this year, year to date, at the same time over the last year, price is down. So it appears that Uber is price-wise is kind of turning the uh, corner on that. So that looks positive for Uber. Here's just a quick chart of Lyft showing that they opened their share price around 90 a share and today they traded about $10 a share. The question is, you know, is, could Lyft get profitable and start to pull out of stage one? Or is Lyft going to uh, go out of business because they can't make money? That's the question with Lyft. So that's a wait and see on them. Uh, again, this is a daily chart of Lyft showing there was an earnings announcement and just prices selling off uh, with a gap down in price after earnings. So that's not good. That's lower lows for Lyft. And Uber on a weekly chart looks like they have you know kind of bottomed out here put in a technically put in a green expansion candle retested that area retested this area again and then prices moved up out of that area so technically the chart doesn't look too bad except for one thing this big red candle and consolidating under that candle i don't like that especially after last quarter they had um, a decent earnings report so that is one negative, along with an overall positive view of Uber. On the daily chart, you can see uh, Uber was bought up into earnings. They had, a, again, I, in my opinion, a positive earnings report, but then sold off afterwards. And many times this happens with these companies where they, shares are bought up into earnings and then sold off. Shares are bought up into earnings and then sold off. And then what's going on is it's, these large funds can do that because they have the size to do that and they actually have the ability to drive price higher and then sell off and take profits and leave retail investors kind of holding the bag. So is that going to happen again this earnings uh, quarter or not? I don't know, but technically speaking, this large green igniting candle on Friday is positive, but earnings are coming out on Tuesday. So we'll just have to wait and see on that. Again, Uber's um, other information I found out about them was that last quarter they beat on the top line revenue and they beat their uh, earnings per share estimates. So that was all good. Upcoming, it's disappointing that they're expected to have somewhere between a loss of nine cents per share and a gain of 15 cents per share. So both those numbers are lower than last quarter. So I found that disappointing. Um, they're expected to grow revenue um, a little bit, but that's disappointing that they can't continue that momentum of positive earnings into the next quarter. So it's just, it's one of them things where 
just having a difficult time making money. Some facts I found out about Uber. Um, again, they have about a 62 billion market cap with 2 million outstanding shares. Uh, they had 11.6 billion in debt and 4.3 billion in cash. And they had 31 uh, billion in sales. So, you know, they're selling a lot of rides, but they're not making money. <laughs> um, earn, next earnings date is on May 2nd. Last quarter, they reported 29 cents per share earnings. So that was good. But the problem with them is that, in my opinion, is they have a trailing 12 months earnings of negative 469 per share on a negative 28% profit margin. So they don't even have a, a decent business margin. And, um, you know, they IPO'd at $42. And today they're valued at $31 per share. So they've definitely been punished for not performing, not, not getting profitable. Uh, they don't pay a dividend and they don't have a P ratio because they don't make money. They're losing money. Um, one interesting thing I found out about them is that um, they have a net income per employee a five-year average of minus $221,000 per employee. So that is a pretty big number to be paying for employees and not getting any income from your employees or your investment there. Um, again, they have good revenue growth and they dominate rideshare, but they lose money. Again, upcoming earnings expectations are to grow the revenue, but still lose 10 cents per share or up to make 15 cents per share. So that's less than the previous quarter. That's disappointing. Uh, most recently, they have laid off employees to try to cut costs, which is unfortunate, but that's what they feel that they have to do. Um, I personally think they should focus on rideshare and Uber Eats and forget about the freight industry, which is highly competitive and forget about mobility for the time being and just focus on what they do best and try and focus on making money. Then I think it would be okay to branch out into mobility. I would still avoid freight. Um, if they could start making money, then they could start to buy back shares to reward investors. Um, Uber has grown tr tremendously but they have also compounded their losses over that time. So my understanding is that this trailing 12 months of negative 469 per share is higher than it was a year ago. So that was another negative for Uber's forward business. So for me at this time, Uber is a um, wait and see. Technically, it looks like it could go up but fundamentally, they're just not making money. So it was a long-term hold for me. It's a no-go. Um, Short-term, just on price, I could see maybe taking a small position depending on what happens with earnings and the price chart. Um, but again, buy, sell, or hold, that's got to be your decision. What, you know, what did you find out about Uber over the last month? Have you watched the charts? Have you done any homework before making an investment? That's what I found. Hope that helps you guys out. Um, I wanted to include this eBay chart because this is a company that was also um, sold off in 2021 and then 2022, but over the last four quarters has been growing earnings and their prices started to slowly appreciate very similar to Uber, but they have earnings and they have positive earnings growth. A very similar chart to Uber, um, but with positive earnings growth. And I'll show you that here on this weekly chart. These are earnings per share using the, um, the gap uh, accounting mechanism. So here, five quarters ago, we had $1.05 per share. 
this earnings, we had 99 cents per share, then a dollar per share, then a dollar seven per share. And most recently, a week ago, we had a dollar eleven per share. So eBay's doing a nice job um, with whatever they're doing, growing earnings. I know they've had a lot of competition from Amazon, Etsy, maybe Shopify, and others. But I think as a website, they're still a valid um, consumer, uh, valid retail website that a lot of people still use. So that's one reason I to maybe take a look at eBay. Growing earnings with some slight appreciation since um, October, September, October. So that's that. Uh, this chart I wanted to include for you guys because it can, it's a good example of how to read a chart when it comes to these large range expansion bars. It can ignite moves lower, like this red bar here, ignited this move lower, consolidated, and then we have these other expansion bars that kind of ignited these moves higher. See these green bars here that were wider than the rest? Those ignited these moves higher. And now most recently, in the last few weeks, we've had some uh, large red expansion bars far away from the moving average. And so that, for me, I own the stock, but I had sold out after I had seen this, this red bar form. So I took profits on that one. Even though they have growing earnings, I still watch the charts. So that's an example of a pivot, how to use pivots and range expansion bars. Hopefully that is something you can learn from. And it just looks a little bit worse on this daily chart. You can see here on the right how those weekly bars would look on a um, daily chart. So that's that. And one thing I would say about this chart is if this can turn back up because they have had such good earnings, I would consider getting back in the stock. But if this keeps trending lower or just hangs out here in this lower range, um, that's probably not something I would consider getting back in. This area here has now formed kind of support. If it breaks that area, it's going lower. If it can turn around and go higher than, than maybe, but you can see the volume come in here in this this stock is being sold at this time. So hopefully that helps you guys with that concept of pivots, range expansion bars, maybe how to evaluate a company like Uber, what to look for. And that is all for this month's video. And I hope it has helped you and your analysis of markets and companies and how we can put the odds in our favor using technical analysis, some basic fundamentals, and some common sense. So again, in your mind, in your trading plan, you're going to have to come up with buy, sell, or hold, you know, what makes sense for you. Good luck to you all, and thanks for watching, liking, sharing, and subscribing. Again, this is Phil at Laptop Trader on YouTube. My email is laptoptraderphil at gmail.com. Goodbye, and I will see you next month.